This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. From heaven, they're assisting us to accomplish things in our days. Things that are so important and so great. Things that will bring our world to completion. And sometimes it's so hard to understand how can it be that such a huge, huge mission going to be finished by people that are so fragile and so tiny like us. But when you look to the sides you see there is no one else here but us, except of us. So or that nothing will happen, or that it will happen through us. And in a place that there is no one else except of you, you must put that effort to be that one that will, will do the work, that will, that will bring redemption. Now, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev once told a story that there was a huge king that had a big, big war in front of him. So he sent his special forces, his soldiers to go and fight, to take over, to conquer that huge city that he wanted to, to conquer. And all those soldiers of that special unit, they died in that war. So the king he realized that he doesn't have another choice, so he sent the second, sent second unit, and the second, and the third, and the fourth, everyone, all those soldiers died in the war. But we cannot ignore, he could not ignore from their achievements, from their success. They cracked the wall, they broke part of the gate, and, and they achieved some, but still the war was uh, not over and the wall that was surrounding that city that he wanted to capture was uh, still standing. So he starts sending the simple soldiers and more units and more units and thousands and thousands of soldiers are being killed in that war. And in the end he lost all of his soldiers. And the king was standing in front of that wall that huge city and all of his soldiers died and he asked himself what I'm gonna do I can lose the war but then he looked deep into the damage that his soldiers those powerful and strong soldiers damaged that wall and he realized that the damage is so severe so big that for sure he gonna win that war so he ran back to his city and took the women and the children and the elders and they came with stones and sticks and they won the war. And it was not because that they were stronger than the special forces of the first generation of, of soldiers that died in that war. Just based on their work, based on their effort, on their quality, on their strength, they gave us those people that are coming in the last generation, they gave us the opportunity, the ability to conquer that city. So today you look at yourself and you find yourself so weak and so broken and so, so close to despair, so wounded and, 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 and shaky, not stable, barely holding to the Jewish rules, barely holding to Yirat Shammayim, so far from faith losing your faith and your happiness so many times in one day, barely able to function, barely able to, to, to do the right things and, and, and looking at yourself and checking from head to toe, all full with wounds and, and, and scratches and scars and, and, and traumas from, from, from your earliest days and from your childhood. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to accomplish what that you've been sent to achieve, to do. Because the one that sent you, he knew, he knows exactly who is he sending and why and what is your mission. 
And for you it seems like, wow, the war is so huge and so many people died already. You don't know how close you are to the end, to completion, to achieve the final result of bringing complete redemption. It's under our noses, it's here. It's happening right now and we are those ones that are going to accomplish that. And for that we need to think a little bit. What are we talking about? What is that redemption? What is that redemption all about? What are we talking about? We're talking about a complete change of nature. We're talking about renewing the world completely. From A to Z. That nothing going to stay the same. Everything will be different. Everything that you know will become great. You won't have no lackings in your life anymore. Like that the prophets are promising us there will be no more sicknesses and no more pain and no more sorrow and no more death. It means that if now redemption took place and it happened just now, that's it. We're staying. No one is going. We're all succeeding. You don't go back to that gray house. When you're going to come back to your house, it's going to be the same house, but it's going to be different. No more leakings, no more problems with the electricity, no more um, sounds of, 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 of uh, 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 how do you say creaking? that? Creaking, uh, uh, the gate, everything will be smooth suddenly. The path will be clean. You don't need to move the, the snow anymore. All the streets are clean. They're going to be a new spirit that will come. Just the wind will come and will take away all the filth and all, all, all the, the dirt and, and all the, the, the waste and all the, 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 the pain and all the sorrow. And everyone will smile. Now, how hard it is to believe. It's easy to hope, but to believe that really it can take place in our days, in our life. I mean, now, suddenly. Pitom Yavayom. Suddenly that day will come and, and, and life will be different forever. That's the redemption. I explained it already once. And to myself I explained it so many times. People won't take their children anymore to the aquarium. You don't need an aquarium anymore. You want to see the fish, you want to see the sea, you go to the sea. And the sea is going to open for you like it had been open for Am Yisrael 3,000 years ago in the Red Sea. You will want to show the, the fish to your children, you're going to go with them to the ocean, and the ocean will invite you in. All the creation going to function corresponding to the will of the Creator that will do the best thing for every one of us. Now you want, you know what's going on in the depth of the, of, of the ocean? You know the amounts of treasures and good stones and pearls and things that are hidden over there just for us? Like that, the treasures that Am Yisrael took out of the Red Sea. And it's nothing compared to the treasures that are waiting for us in the, in the last redemption. All the diamonds and the land will bring out all of the fruits and everything will be so, so tasty and juicy and wonderful and healthy and, and on, only, only cures and, and, and potions and smells of perfume and, 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 and everything will be so perfect. We cannot imagine. You're going to need something, there's going to be a bird that is bringing, delivering that thing. No more UPS, no more troubles, everything. Don't need your signature or no package, everything by animals. You're going to go out from your house, you're going to have deers and, and, and squirrels saying hello and opening the doors for you and all the creation going to become one. It will all going to be united. It's all going to be one unit that is serving the Creator, that is showing godliness, that is revealing the power of the Almighty to all of His creations. And everyone will have only good heart and a wishing soul and smiles on their faces. And everyone going to greet each other and going to ha be happy to see each other. And if you know about certain wicked person, an evil creature, someone so awful, you're not going to see him anymore. He won't be here. You won't need even to tell him goodbye. When that wind will come and wash the universe, he's going to be washed away. No more enemies. 
No more terror, no more, no more um, pain, no more war, no more destruction, no more arguments, no more fights. Only understanding and love and patience and good attributes will exist. And the night going to shine like the day. And the animals going to get along. And the tiger and the zebra and the wolf and the deer, everyone will be happy. No one going to eat each other. No one going to fight against each other. Everyone will be happy with this share. Everyone will be healthy. If now you have a problem with your neighbors, and you're going to come and you're going to see that that fence is, is standing now and your tiny room, it won't be tiny anymore. Suddenly it's going to be large. Hashem going to open everything and especially going to open the hearts. And you won't lack a thing in the time of redemption. Now, what is holding us back from that moment? It's only our understanding of that possibility that really it can take place in our life. That's the only thing that we're missing. We just need to understand when we're serving the Creator, when we're talking about faith, we need to understand we're not talking about religion. To believe in the Creator, it doesn't mean to put filin. It doesn't mean to keep Shabbat. It doesn't mean to eat kosher. Okay, now you're Jewish, you're obligated. Great, keep halacha. Keep Torah and mitzvah. There is no problem with that. It's great, it's amazing. You're obligated. One time the Creator, when He decided to reveal His face to His nation and to take them out of Egypt and to redeem them, He gave them the Torah by Moshe Rabbeinu. There is no doubt about the truth of the Torah. The Torah is real. And we're all obligated and must follow the rules of the Torah. But when we're talking about the complete redemption, we are talking about the Creator Himself revealing Himself again. Showing His face to His creations. Revealing His loving kindness, His unconditional love on every creation and creation. On every animal and every flower. With no connection if he's Jewish or not, if he's Hasidic or not, if he's a Breslev or what, no one gonna care anymore. Only the truth gonna reveal itself. There will be no one that will be more important. Even Mashiach will be humble. Mashiach gonna be one of us. Mashiach gonna walk between us. He's gonna be so humble. So you're gonna respect him? Great, he's gonna respect you as well. There will be no, oh, that person, you don't know him, he's so wealthy, he's so rich. No one's going to care about wealth because money won't lack, no one's going to lack money. Everyone's going to have all their needs. Today when we, some of us are starving, are so confused, some of us are suffering, some of us are sick. So okay, you see someone that is healthy, that looks good, that he's strong and powerful, he can run, he can jump, he can fly, he's got a private jet. So you say, oh, and I'm stuck in traffic, in the train, I don't know what to, okay, because there are differences. Because of the darkness, because of the poverty. But when the redemption will come, when the Creator, the Almighty will come, He gonna uncover the truth. He gonna reveal His loving kindness, His mercy. And the meaning of the word mercy is that He will give charity, that He will support even the ones that are not worthy. Like you and me. Like every person in the universe. We're not worthy. We're not even close to be worthy. Just from the side of His loving kindness, He will show His love on us and then we're all rich. We're all happy. We're all wealthy and healthy. Everything is great and we're not like a thing. And the main thing that we're going to receive is going to be wisdom, knowledge, understanding that there is nothing except of Him. And that He's all good. And we must recognize that good between the cracks, be through that, that curtain that is blocking His light today. And we must call Him with truth. Because the Creator will reveal Himself only when we're going to call Him. That's the way. That's how He created the world. And there is only one way to call Him that He's going to answer, and it's with truth. And what is truth? Truth is your truth. Truth is not to lie to yourself. 
Truth is to express your thoughts and your emotions. It's to be who that you are and not to be embarrassed in who that you are. It's to stop hating yourself. Stop blaming yourself on things that you never done. Because even if you did something in your life that you embarrassed in that thing, that you feel ashamed, that you, you regret, you don't want to have that experience, but you do. You have. And now you want to clean it. You want to fix it. So now, please, make an investigation. You hurt someone's feeling. You did something wrong. You ruined. You lied. You destroyed. You cheated. You betrayed. You did something horrible in your life. Great. Now let's check it. Please. Go back to that moment. Bring yourself again to that situation and check yourself. Be brave. Deal with your fears that you're refusing to feel those emotions, that you don't want to go to those places anymore, that you don't want no one to remind you of that horrible moments that you had. No, please be strong and go back to that moment in your thoughts and deal. Why did you sin? Why? You did it. Okay, the worst. Why? Ask yourself why. The answer will be because I was weak. Because I was afraid, because I wanted attention, because I was looking for satisfaction, for joy. Some reason you had, and not an evil reason, a good reason. Maybe you act wrong. Maybe that was not the right way to find pleasure, to find satisfaction, to be happy, to find, to find what that you were looking for. But what was your intention? If you're really going to be honest to check yourself, you're going to find yourself innocent and not guilty. I promise you that. And I'm promising you that out of my life experience. And the wisdom is something that you buy from your life experience. Check yourself. The worst sins of them all. What were you looking for? Love. When you were looking for the highest things, that's when you fell to the lowest places. But you didn't know how to achieve them. Okay, so now you're going to blame yourself on being so stupid so far? No, you were not educated. Your parents never taught you how to go in the right route, how to go in the right path, how really to be strong and holy. I have a father. My father is a strong person. He's a powerful person. He, I'm telling you the truth. That's my father. But me, as a child, I was weak and scared. That was me, as a child. And how can it be, I'm asking myself. My father was such a strong person. He was a hotel manager. He had seven hotels that he was running. And he was going to gym, and he was practicing, and he was doing sports, and he was boxing. And he was a wealthy person. You can imagine to yourself, he was powerful and strong. And me, as a kid, I was terrified. I was always scared. Now, how can it be? You have the best. I don't know if he's the best, but for what that I wanted to achieve as a child, for me, he was the best role model in the world. If you would ask me as a child, who you want to be like, I would say like my father. I wanted to be like him. Great. Now, I was the opposite. How can it be? No matter how strong he was, I was not able to receive it. There was something that was blocking between us that was stopping me from receiving from the source, from my father. I was not able to be like him. And it's crazy. But it was there. The fact is that I did not receive all of his courage and all of his strength and all of his power. I was terrified. I was hiding. I was lying. I was running for my life. All of the time I was scared. So can I blame myself for not being as strong? No. I can understand that there was something over there that was blocking me. Now, okay, you want to be righteous. Now, you want to be pure. You want to keep all Torah and mitzvot. Now, you learn the halachot. You learn the Jewish rules. And you're not able to, to make it. Why? Maybe there is something that is blocking you. 
Maybe it's not your fault. Oh, I'm not keeping that halakha. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Okay, there's a reason. I'm telling you. Try to look deep. You will understand and you will see that there are things that are holding you back and it's not your fault. The main thing that every person must do is to stop blaming himself on his failures. You're not the one to blame. There is a creator to this world, to the creation. Now if you want to blame him, it's also useless, but at least you're going to start being logic. At least by thinking, okay, he's doing everything, like the verses are saying, that he is asa ose veya ase lechol amasim. That he did everything and he is doing everything and he will do everything. It's written on the Creator that he did and does and will do everything. That's reality. That's the truth. Who are you? It's written there is no one except of him. So why am I blaming myself if there is no one except of him? Now it's written, what is the explanation to the world, to the word Ani? I am. What's the meaning of the word I am? So Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is answering that question by saying, Ani ze hakli lekabel et abracha. You are the vessel, I am the vessel to contain the blessing. That's who you are. You're just a vessel. You can contain the bounty. That's who you are. You're able to feel the thoughts of Hashem. You have the ability to sense the spirit of the Creator. You can taste the creation. It's the Creator Himself. You are the one that is experiencing life. That's who you are. The creation is going through you so you can experience it. That's who you are. You're not really here. You're just in that position that Hashem put you. And you need to go through something. But in that way, while being who that He wants you to be, you can only experience what that He is passing through you. So the only thing that we can do is just to work on that, to nullify ourselves to Him as much as we can. Just to let Him in, into our lives. To invite Him into our lives. To call Him with truth. Now what is that truth that we're talking about? It's your honesty. It's your honest prayer. Now if I'm telling you, you need to pray to the Creator from the bottom of your heart, you must say the truth. Because if you're not going to say the truth, it won't be your prayer. Your prayer is your needs. It's to express your lackings. What did you need? And if you're not going to talk about what did you really need, you're not going to say the truth. If you need money and you're going to start screaming on something else, if you want to be loved and you're going to start talking about purity, about learning, I don't know what, you're not going to be honest. If you're too scared and you feel like, I want to scream, and instead you're going to start pretending to be some kind of a hero, creator, father in heaven, please do this, do that. You're lying to yourself. It won't be an honest prayer. An honest prayer is a prayer that comes out from an honest heart. An honest heart is a heart that is expressing his emotions. Now don't judge yourself on your emotions. Instead of judging yourself and criticizing yourself and disqualifying yourself and erasing yourself and then, as a fact of all of that negativity, start lying and making up new stories, choose the old way and just be honest. Be who that you are. People are thinking to themselves, Oh, I'm suffering because I'm not learning enough. I don't have money because I'm not keeping Shabbat in, in, in the best way. Um, we have arguments in the house because that I'm not guarding my eyes when I'm walking in the streets. And I know where you got that message. I know where you got that negativity. From those people that are negative about themselves and going and giving negative classes and passing their negative energy into your lives and contaminating your hearts. 
and throwing you to sadness and to despair because I want to see you guarding your eyes. You're not able to do that. And I want to see you not being afraid and you're not able to do that. And I want to see you keeping Shabbat in the most amazing way in the world. And the truth is that you're not able to do that. Because you don't have enough money and because that your wife she's under so much pressure and because your children are not listening to you and for many many reasons and you must go to work also on Friday and many other things. So you're not able and also in Shabbat and you don't know all the, law, the laws and you don't understand how to do that. So someone must understand you in this world. There must be someone that's going to be your friend in this world. The beginning of that friendship is that you're going to be your friend. That's the beginning. You first of all must accept yourself and be your own friend. Accept yourself. Understand yourself. Hug yourself. Be positive with yourself. Listen to yourself, to the truth. If you want to keep Shabbat, that's huge. If you want to eat kosher, before of eating, Avraham Avinu, received a huge reward from the Creator only on his faith. He believed in Hashem. He didn't do anything. He just believed. And the Creator count that faith as charity. Like he gave charity. Like he took out money out of his pocket and gave. He just sat and believed in Hashem. He didn't move the finger. He didn't put filin, he didn't keep Shabbat, he just had faith. He believed in Hashem. And the Creator already count that thing as charity. Oh, you give charity. Because we cannot understand the greatness of the Creator. But He is so kind. He is so pure. And on all of your questions, so how can it be, and how that can be, and why that happened, and if you say that he's so great, so why am I suffering so hard, and why she's suffering, and why am I losing my mind, and why they lost their house, and why they've been exiled, okay, I hear you. I'm just asking for a second. Don't interpret those things that happened as punishment. Wait a second. We will think about it. We will try to explain it in a different angle, in a different way. But first of all, don't judge it in that negative way that you've been taught. Don't think about it as punishments, as hatred. You today make millions of mistakes misinterpreting the wisdom of the Creator. Because you see someone that fell, oh, something. You don't know what happened. First of all, ask yourself, do I know what happened? About myself, for an example, I can tell you for sure that from my worst hours, from the hardest difficulties that I had in my life, I was growing. I developed. I became much more humble. I received tons of wisdom. I learned so much. I became much more sensitive and caring and loving and thinking and observing and aware to myself. Because of those radical pains, because of those radical situations, because of that crazy fear and lack of stability. But still, it gave me something. And those things that I received in those dark hours, they are very precious to me today. I don't want to give up on those, on the fact that today I'm able to respect my wife, for an example, much, much more than I was able to respect her 10 years ago or 15 or 16 years ago. I was not able. I was not appreciating her. What gave me the power to appreciate her today much, much more than before? Only one thing, that she rebuked me, that she stirred me to, sh to shreds, to pieces, that she shown to me that she was right and I was wrong. But if you would ask me in real time, do you want that argument to take place now in your life? You would see me scream for my life. Help! No! No way! I don't want that! It's the worst thing for me in my life. I don't want. But today, if you're going to ask me, 
If I would give up on one of our arguments, I would tell you for sure not. For sure not. Because what that I learned in those tests, in those hard hours, is more precious than gold, than diamonds, than the most valuable stone in the world. Nothing can compare to wisdom, to humility, to appreciation, to love, to good attributes. And those are things that you can buy only, only when you're being truthful and humble and you accept on yourself the real yoke of heaven, the real hand of the Creator, that you really try to look and find the wisdom, that you're ready to learn, that you are willing to accept the rebuke, that you're thirsty for the knowledge of the truth, that you're seeking for the real truth, that you're not satisfying yourself only with lusts and desires, and you're arguing and fighting against every rebuke or everything that shakes your stability. No, you say, if it's the truth, I want it. When someone is rebuking you, you need to ask yourself, why is he rebuking me? Why now that situation takes place in my life? Why? If it's the truth, if the reason of that argument, if the fact that that rebuke came to you is based on something real, really you need to fix yourself. You really need to work on yourself and to become better. That's what you feel. You feel that that person now that is arguing with you is telling you something real. He is right. He's got a point in his words. You must follow that person forever. You must have gratitude to that person. You must appreciate him. You must understand that. That he's giving you something that is more precious than gold. Because he's revealing the truth to you. The truth that you rather to drop. That you on your own for yourself would never go to those depths to investigate and to check. You would never do such tshuva to tear yourself to pieces until you're going to find that truth. You're not enough, you're not honest enough. You're not as pure to tear yourself to pieces like the deaf person is doing to you. So it's true, we don't want the pain, we don't want the sorrow, but if that's the cost of learning the truth, so it's worth it. You go every day to work, 8 hours, 10 hours, sometimes 12 and 14 hours, it's not easy, but why is it worth it? Because you're paying your bills, because you're receiving some comfort, some quiet into your life. You can send your children to learn, to school. You're able now to, food, to eat, to bring food to your table. You can sit and enjoy Shabbat, a joyful Shabbat. Something is happening and it's worthy. Now think about knowledge. Think about the truth. Isn't it priceless? Isn't it above everything else? Is there something that is more precious than knowledge? The knowing the truth and the deepest truth is the truth about yourself, who you really are. Because who that you are is who that you're going to work with to accomplish your holy desires. If you have a dream, if you have a vision and you don't know yourself, now today go buy a new computer. I promise you, you don't have a clue, you don't know at all how many programs are installed, how many abilities that computer, that device has. You don't know how wise, how genius it is. You don't know how much wisdom they, they, they planted inside of that simple device. And you, compared to it, it's junk, it's garbage compared to you. You're so much wiser than the biggest, strongest computer in the world. You don't know your abilities and your capabilities, your power, your spiritual power, so many times more. You are channeled from inside to an endless source of wisdom, to the sea of the souls, to endless, to infinity, to the Creator Himself. Prophets in earlier generations would hear the voice of Hashem talking from inside. So it means that that program is installed inside of you. Because Kol Am Israel are prophets. All of our nations can become prophets. That's who that we are. Because you are a child of a prophet. Because you're one of the children of Abraham, of Yitzchak, of Yaakov, of the holy tribes. 
that all of them experienced prophecy. All of them saw the face of Hashem. And for sure that your soul was standing on the Mount Sinai and seeing, visualizing, seeing the face of the Creator. That on him it's written, Lo adam A person cannot see me and stay alive. And when we saw him, we all died. But then he revived us. He gave us life. So now we are alive with that ability of seeing his face, face to face, mouth to mouth, to speak with him, to talk to him. Now, when you're talking to someone over the phone and you cannot see him, you still have that confidence that he will hear you. That's why you can have your long speeches over the phone. No problem. Why? Because you believe that he's there. Even if you cannot see him, you have that confidence in that device that it works. From your life experience, you used it already hundreds of thousands of millions of times, and you know, it works. You dial, he answers, you speak, he gets the message, and that's it. So you talk. When you talk to the Creator, it depends in your confidence how much you're going to achieve in your prayers. So you need to work on your self-confidence that the Creator, He loves you. And to go with that love and to count on Him and to pray. But you must pray from your heart. You must pray an honest prayer. You must be honest when you ask. You cannot ask for nonsense. And I don't mean ask for small things. If small things are the things you need, you should ask for small things. I'm saying don't just mess up your prayers. Just don't go and pray on nonsense on things that are not really important to you in your life. Go and say the truth. Go find a quiet place and open your heart and talk about your real problems. On the things that are disturbing you, that are hurting you, that are destroying your life. Things that without those things you feel so empty and so confused and so weak. Go and deal with your weaknesses. Go fight with your fears. Go talk about your problems. Go tell Hashem, I'm scared to go out of my house. Hashem, I'm afraid to go to my work. Hashem, I don't want to fight to see myself in front of my boss. Please, Hashem, I don't want to feel that I'm so lost. I don't want to be poor anymore. Hashem, I want to have money. Hashem, I want to be healthy. Please, Hashem, make him healthy, make her healthy. Ask for your real needs from a broken heart, from your wounded heart. Express your heart. Those are going to be the prayers that will reveal the loving kindness of the unbelievable, great Creator. He will show His unconditional love on us. And it's under our noses. It's here. It's right now. I'm telling you, it's taking place in our life in this generation. It's very easy for me to promise to you that you're going to see Mashiach. It's very easy. It's very easy. Because if you're going to ask me, I'm going to tell you that you already, you saw him already. It's so easy. You just need to follow your heart. In one day, suddenly, people are going to say, Oh, that is Mashiach. How can it be? We didn't pay attention. We couldn't figure out that it was Him. Mashiach will come by Sachadat. People's minds will be distracted and they won't realize that Mashiach is already walking between them and waking up their hearts and touching their emotions and waking up their spirits and make their souls shine. It's hard to recognize maybe because of the distractions, because of that crazy train that is crossing. Again and again and again and again and again. And that's life. But in the end, suddenly, Oh, that's Mashiach! Wow! I couldn't think about it. How can it be? It never crossed my mind because you were so distracted. But Mashiach is one of us. Mashiach is a person. Mashiach is a person with problems, with sorrow, with pain. Mashiach is a person that is begging to Hashem to bring redemption. He's a human being. He's a sensitive, cute personality. He's someone that cares. 
He's someone that is so innocent and so pure that all of his prayers are being accepted in heaven. That's Mashiach. That's the difference between us to Mashiach, that Mashiach is really talking from the heart. That Mashiach really being so honest and so simple and just being pure. He's being himself. So he's Mashiach. He's just saying to the Creator the truth with all of his heart. He's just standing like that, please Hashem. What can we do? Please help us. We don't have the power. We don't know how to do it. Please, you can, you're the only one that can. And it's so simple, and it's so innocent, and it's so cute, and it's so lovely, and so nice that Hashem is saying, Yes, my child, I'm going to do as you wish. No worries. I'm backing you up. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to win the war for you. You don't need to be afraid. That's exactly what is going to happen. Exactly like that it took place with King David. Like that the Creator was protecting all the youth. Huge, huge, huge ancestors, uh, the, 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 the seven shepherds of our nation, and, and revealing the light through the greatest ones of all generations, all the princes of our nation. He will reveal His endless love on us in the last generation in the same exact way. And He's going to cancel nature. Nature won't have no more power on your life anymore. It won't take you one hour and a half to travel in traffic. It won't happen anymore. You're going to fly. You'll have the ability to fly. And those are not fairy tales. It's Tanadi Beliau, it's Gemara, it's Zohar Kadosh, it's Midrashim. That's the Bible. Those are the stories of the real Bible. The Levites, they were flying. So why? They were flying because they were Levites? No! They were flying because the Creator wanted them to fly. He wanted to show His greatness. All of our nation went in the middle of the Red Sea. Great! Was that the first time and the last time that that kind of miracle took place? No! When Elijah the prophet wanted to cross the, the Jordan River, the Creator, our creator opened the, the, the river for him. And when his student, Elisha, ran after him, immediately he opened the sea again. And when Elisha went back after Eliyahu went up on a flaming fire, holy chariot with flaming horses, to heaven. So Elisha the prophet had to go back. So when he came back to the Jordan River, the Jordan River opened itself. And the same river opened itself when all of Am Israel came into the Holy Land and the 12 tribes put 12 stones in, in the middle of the river to show that miracle that the Creator opened on, not only the Red Sea, also the river for them. So those things took place in many, many occasions. Now you're going to say, oh, no, ah, you're kidding me. It's not going to happen to me. It happened to Elijah the prophet, to Elisha Navi. It happened to the Levites. It happened to the Kohanim. It happened to Am Israel in that generation 3,000 years ago. You're wrong. You misinterpret reality. The Levites were not the ones that opened the sea. Moshe Rabbeinu was not the one that opened the sea. The Creator opened the sea for Moshe. The Creator opened the sea for Elijah. The Creator, He is the one that is doing those things. So it is in His power to do that also today. For who? For the one He loves. But we forgot about His power. We forgot about His miracles. Someone, I met a, 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 a person in, in class few months ago, she told me, my son, he did tshuva, he did tshuva, I start laughing. She said, why are you laughing? I told him, he didn't do tshuva. He said, no, she said, no, he did, he did, he's keeping Shabbat, he's putting tefillin. I told her, yes, okay, so he became religious, he's not doing tshuva. There's no connection, he's far from tshuva like heaven, far from earth. He's not doing tshuva, <laughs> I know it. He's not doing tshuva, not yet at least. Shuva is something else. He became religious. Oh, amazing, wonderful, great. He's got an amazing hobby. He's putting filin, he's keeping Shabbat, he's eating kosher, great. He bought tzitziyot, he's not shaving his beard. Amazing, wonderful, great, do that, whatever. Okay, you're obligated. Go for it. I don't mind. I'm also obligated. I do it the same. But it doesn't mean that he's doing tshuva. It doesn't mean that you're doing tshuva. To do tshuva is to come back to Hashem. To come back to Hashem, it's not to obey. You're not a soldier. You're a child. To come back to your father, it's not to work in the office. It's to love your father. 
It's not to work in his business, in the family business. That's not to be close to your father. To work in the family business, it's not to be close to your father. To be close to your father, it's to love your father. It's to appreciate your father. It's to pray. It's to have an honest heart. It's to be able to express your emotions and your thoughts and your fears and your desires to your father. To go to your father when you need something and to ask for help, to ask for guidance, to ask for his wisdom. To ask from him to help you to solve your problems. To tell him, I don't know what to do. I don't have a clue how to deal with my issues, with my problems. I need your loving hand, your wide, generous hand. I need your love. I need your support. I need you to show your mercy on me, on all of your beloved ones. And it's in your power to bring complete redemption to this world. It's in our hands. And there is no one to do that for us. Don't count on that rabbi or on that rabbi. Not on the rabbi in Crown Heights and not on the rabbi in Jerusalem and not in the rabbi in uh, Lakewood and not on that rabbi in uh, Flatbush and not on that rabbi in Kiryat Gat and not in the Mekubala Eloki from Natanya. Don't. They won't help you. They need to help themselves. And if they're going to do something good for you, good for humanity, great. Thank you. We're grateful. Now you have a job as an individual to bring redemption, to do something useful with your time, to pray for your people, for your beloved ones, to establish faith in the world, to reveal a munah, faith in the world, that people will know Him. You have your mission. To smile to people, to be nice, to be kind, to be helpful, to be useful, to do some good. To work on your emotions, to work on your attributes, to work on your, on the, your emotional stability, to get stronger, to learn, to wash yourself, to clean yourself, to cleanse yourself, to purify yourself, to do good things. You have your own mission. Don't be distracted. Ask yourself, what is my mission? What can I do? There is one person that he knows how to make music. There is another person that he knows how just to be nice and to listen to his friends. There is another person that he knows how to make money. And there is another person that he is an amazing father and a husband. Everyone needs to do his job. Everyone needs to use the talents that the Creator planted inside of him. If He made you a fantastic mother, you need to go and teach all of those women that don't know how to deal with their children how to become a mother. How to keep loving your children even if they're messing up the house. How to deal with the filth and with the cookings and with the laundry. How to deal with your husband. If you know how to make Shalom Bait, that's your mission. You need to go and teach people how to get along, how to learn how to talk, how to communicate, how to solve problems. You need to, to use the software that the Creator insol installed inside of you. That's how you're going to reveal His godliness. By using the treasures that He treasured inside of you. You cannot use my treasures. You don't have an access to my power. You have only the access to your own. So use it. First step is to accept yourself. To start loving yourself. Start appreciating yourself. Finding the qualities that you have. Who that you really are. Who that Hashem made you to be. You don't need to be tall or short or wise or fast or rich or healthy or wealthy. You need to be exactly who the, the Creator made you to be because He knows much, much better than you what is your mission. For your mission, you need to be exactly who that He made you to be. There are people that they have a certain accent. You need that accent. You need that accent. I met a few months ago in Miami, a convert, a person that comes from, 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 from I don't, an Eastern nation. I don't know which nation, but it, it, it looks from, 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 from the Far East. I don't know. 
And he came to me and he started explaining to me how important it is for him to join a community, a Jewish community, and to, and to get in involved and to get inside. And I'm, I'm looking at that person and, and he looks different. And I don't have no bad thought about it, but I'm looking at him struggling and fighting to get into a foreign place. And I'm telling him, listen. Your mission is not over there. Your mission is not with the Jewish communities. You don't need to find your spot in the Jewish community. And I'll tell you why. Because you're different. You have your background. You have your life experience. Now, if you want to learn from Jewish, great, learn. If you want to charge your battery, so charge your battery. If you want to sit and learn some Torah, great, do that. But Listen, when you will find yourself strong enough, your mission is to go back to your nation and to shine upon them. Because they cannot hear me. They're not going to buy my stories. But they're going to believe you. They're going to listen to you because you are one of them in a way. So you're one of us also? Great! So I'm going to qualify you, the real righteous people are going to give you the power to go and to be light to the nations. Can I go and speak Chinese? Can I go and speak Japanese? Will the Japanese going to buy my speeches? No! They cannot relate to my accent, to the way I look, to the way I sound. They don't understand the, 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 the nuance, the, the, the words, the slang. It's a different language. It's a different vibe. But there need to be a certain person from that certain nation that he will find my words clever and wise and useful and that he will take those advice, that wisdom, and go and translate it to thousands of other people that are surrounding him. That's his zone. And that's how the world will shine. That you will take that lesson and gonna do something with it. Like sharing it on Facebook, like whatever you do, post it and send it and do whatever. Or also even more than that, take that wisdom and go and have self-confidence to go and to talk about what that you learn <coughs> with your friends that I don't have no access to them. Go convince them, go shine upon them. Go show them the pleasant of Torah, the pleasant of connecting yourself to the Creator. You must understand that to be different than who that you are, it's to misinterpret the intention of the Creator. It's to misunderstand the logic of the creation completely. To think that you need to change, that you need to become, that you need to... No. Stop that never-ending war and make peace with yourself. First step, accept yourself, your face, your eyes, your voice, your ears, your nose, your height, your weight, your size, your money, your, your laugh, your nose, everything that you can't stand in yourself. Stop it. You just don't see the beauty of the creation. You want to see the beauty of the creation? Look at yourself. Look at yourself and try to see the beauty of your true self. Who are you? You go to the western wall, the wall of tears. What do you see over there? Gigantic boulders, that's what you see. Stones, there's nothing to see. But why you can see? Because you're coming with faith. Huge boulders you can see in Egypt, you can see in Jordan, you can see in, in Asia, you can see in Russia. Huge, gigantic stones you can see in South America, you can see in Mexico, you can see in, in Colombia, you can see in China, in Japan. Why the Western Wall? Why the Kotel Amaravi, the Western Wall? Why? Because you have faith. When you go over there, you look, you observe, you listen to the quiet. But that quiet is the existence of the Creator and there is no place in the creation that the Creator is not over there. He's filling all spaces. He's inside and outside the creation. He's inside every crack. 
He's in the fruits, he's in the grass, he's in the vegetables, he's in the trees, he's in the flowers, he's in the wind. He's the spirit of the creation. He's in the waves, he's in the fish, he's in the animals, he's in the birds. He's the life of the creation. He's all the details together and every individual on his own. And there is nothing except of him, so you can find him in your house. You can find him in your prayers. Not only when he's going to answer your prayer. While you're praying, you can find him in your prayers. He's waking you up to pray in a certain way that is bringing a certain salvation that is required to you. Like we're saying in the beginning of Shemona Yisra, Hashem Sfatai Tiftach. We're announcing to ourselves, we're reminding ourselves that the one that is opening our mouths, our lips, is the Creator Himself, the one that we're praying to. He gives you the words to pray. He puts the right words in your mouth when you pray, that you will be answered on the right things that are required for you, that are so important to you. So now you're not going to respect your prayer. You're going to disrespect your emotions that He planted inside of you. Your senses and your emotions are the wisdom of the Creator Himself. You are who that He made you to be. He sent you to this world in a mission. And for that He qualified you with certain tools and weapons. And He gave you those tools that you're going to work with them. That you're going to accomplish things with them. That you're going to take those tools and go to work. To work on what? On what did you see? On the surface around you, your family, your house, your neighborhood, your community, your area, your town. <coughs> on those things you need to work. You cannot work on my town. You cannot work on my family. You cannot fix things in the Far East. If you live in Vancouver, you cannot. Maybe through internet. Great. So use your skills with internet and fix things around the globe. Amazing! Using the abilities that the Creator gave you to do things in the places that you have access to. That's how you reveal godliness. That's how you reveal the wisdom of the Creator that He planted that wisdom into His creation and you are one of his creations so accept him into your life by accepting yourself and give yourself a break stop slaughtering yourself and killing yourself on daily basis blaming yourself on your failures it's dark outside because the creator turned off the light you don't have a million dollars in your bank account because He never gave you that amount. And if He gave you that amount and you lost it in the casino or in businesses, He gave you a certain advice that you followed and you lost your money against your will. If someone would ask you if you want to lose your money, you would say no. The Creator gave you the money and took that money. He is memit u morish u ma'ashir. He gives life and he takes life. He gives money and he takes money. There is no one except of him. He is the one that married you to your wife and he is that one that broke that relationship. He is that one that gave you that child and he is that one that decided to take that child back to his place in heaven in an early age, unfortunately, and we're all crying with you on your horrible sorrow, on our sorrow, and we don't understand what he's doing. But he is the one that is doing so stop blaming yourself on your failures. You couldn't save your child. You couldn't save your wife. You could not save your husband. You could not save your business. It was not in your hands. What that is in your hand is only one thing. To have faith. To have trust. To work on yourself to know Him. To work on yourself to accept His supervision on your life. To have your Atshamayim Amitit. Real fear from heaven. Real faith in heaven. 
real love to the Creator. That is something that is in your hands. So on that you should work. With money, without money. When you're married, when you're divorced, when you haven't met your soulmate yet, when you have a house, when you're homeless, you can always spend your life with the Creator. And the highest way of them all to have a relationship with Him, it's to have a conversation. No other way to communicate. You want to communicate with Him, you need to learn how to communicate from the world, from relationship in the world. You cannot have an honest, sincere relationship in this world without an open and sincere conversation. It won't work also with Him. So with Him, what you need to do? Reading texts that I don't understand. I'm going to say Tehillim, verses on verses that I cannot find myself related to. Okay, so what I'm going to do? Oh, I'm going to read Likutet Filot of Rabbi Nathan, prayers of Rabbi Nathan of Breslev from 200 years ago that had been written in Ukraine. Listen, you need to open your heart and to speak, to express your thoughts and your emotions. What is Shemona Esre? Shemona Esre are requests of the righteous people of an earlier generation that expressed their heart, guided us how to express our hearts. What is the book of Tehillim? The verses that have been written, the songs that have been written by King David himself, those are the individual private prayers and requests of King David before he was a king and after he became a king he was talking to the Creator doing Hid Bodedut he was just expressing his thoughts so if you want to do what that he was do doing you don't need to say Tehillim he was not saying Tehillim he was saying his heart so if you're gonna say your heart one day it will become to be a book of Tehillim Rabbi Nathan that wrote the book of prayers of Breslev, he never wrote Likutet Filot. He was just writing the most um, inspiring prayers, 1% of his prayers that he was screaming to the Creator in the field or in the Beit Midrash or in his room or in the synagogue. He was expressing his heart. So you should do that. You learn from King David not to say Tehillim, just to express your thoughts and your emotions. You learn from Moshe Rabbeinu to say the truth, even to be ready to argue with the Creator. If some things are not like you think that they should be, why can Moshe Rabbeinu go and argue and fight with Hashem? And if Hashem is not listening to him, so Moshe Rabbeinu can tell Hashem, look, if you're not following me now, you can kill me. Why Moshe can say that and you cannot? Why? Is it allowed to Moshe to say to Hashem in Barach something and you're not allowed to say that thing? Why? Moshe was honest. Moshe said to Hashem in Barach, if you're now contain, continuing that decree, killing thousands and thousands of people, kill me first. Erase me from that holy book that you wrote. Why can he say that and you cannot say that on the plague of cancer? What's the difference? What's the difference? Tell me what is the difference? Thousands on thousands on thousands of people dying on daily basis from that damn sickness, that damn plague. Now, why won't we stop it? Why won't we fight for our siblings? Oh, I'm not Moshe, I'm not Moses, I'm not King David. Because you fell to despair and to sadness and you gave up on the kindness and mercy of the Creator. But instead of falling to that despair, I'm giving you that advice not to back <laughs> off from asking and begging and demanding and screaming and crying and hoping and yearning and doing whatever it takes to reveal the unconditional love, the one that Moshe was recognizing while screaming to Hashem, while threatening Hashem. 
recognize that same love between the lines, through the cracks, and aim your prayers to that place, to the unconditional love of the Creator that you know, that you believe in His existence, in His power. And a prayer like that, that comes out from an honest place, from a truthful heart, a prayer of truth, that is expressing your real thoughts and emotions and desires, will be answered like that Hashem promised, that He is close to everyone, to everyone who calls Him with truth. So call Him with truth. Not from the verses, not from the Siddur. You can also do that. You're Jewish, you're obligated. Great, do that. But the honest prayer is the highest prayer of them all. And that will be the prayer that will be answered. And thousands of prayer like those from thousands of us going to bring redemption, going to reveal that nature doesn't have no power on us. And it's only a shade, it's only a curtain that is blocking the endless light and power of the Creator to heal us from every sickness and to save us from every trouble and to supply all kinds of bounty and beauty to this world. And I bless you all to believe in yourself and then you'll make wonders in the world. Thank you very much. Please help us, support us. Emunaproject.com, Emuna Project Inc. We're a nonprofit organization. Help us, support us, help us to go and to deliver that wonderful message to the rest of the world, to thousands and thousands of people that are watching our videos live every day. It's an amazing place that we're, we're reaching. We have thousands and thousands of followers around, around the world that are enjoying that wisdom. Please help us to provide that wisdom by supporting us. We have our website, emuna.com. You can find us on all social media outlets and you will find comfort and happiness and joy and satisfaction. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.